Before the war between Ukraine and Russia began, there was much uh, negotiation. In your opinion, could it have been avoided? This war could have been avoided. It was avoidable. Let me go back. But Ukraine is basically a part of uh, the Soviet or Soviet Union. Russians think of uh, Ukraine like we here will think of candy. And uh, the breakaway took place. At that time, a fair number of so the old Soviet nuclear missiles were in Ukraine. The US asked Ukraine to give it up and in return they got a guarantee of their sovereignty. Uh, the Russia also joined that. That was called, I think it was done in Berlin, the Berlin Agreement. Or the, uh, thereafter, there were problems between Russia and Ukraine especially because NATO wanted to bring in missiles. And that's basically a part of the Russian whole Soviet Union territory, which they should not have done. Uh, this went on for some time. Then there are the famous case of Russians taking over Crimea, which originally belonged to them, and they get it to Donbas and other areas. Let's leave that aside. So when it came, it was a question of are you going to put missiles here, join the NATO and put missiles here? Uh, Russians, Russians said no. Now, uh, President Obama and President Biden and uh, President Trump got through it. They didn't concede the Russian claims. On the other hand, they didn't make uh, Ukraine an issue. So, there was room for negotiations to settle it later. Uh, especially President Trump at one time even reached out and had a good rapport with uh, President Putin. And now, after President Biden came in, he sees foreign policy seems to be to take on both Russia and China. He wants to be the defender of the Western order. The Recently, Russia and China signed an agreement which is called the No Limit Friendship. It's a friendship without limits and without any boundaries or prohibitions. So thereafter, when Russia was emboldened by it to push further and ask that nuclear missiles not be put there in Ukraine and Ukraine should not become a member of NATO. US and UK, especially though not the other NATO members, try to play their own game. They try to corner Russia and make Russia back down by Ukraine saying, no, we are going in to join. We want the NATO. We are not giving in to your demands. So they played this game and they expected Putin to climb down. But Putin was ready or he thought he was ready and he's invaded uh, Ukraine. So the real issue is really about the security of Russia and uh, what are they going to do. So this has caught the West and the Americans by surprise. The fighting is going on. Uh, Russians have intervened as Soviet Union in East Germany, in Poland, in uh, Hungary. Uh, when Hungary withdrew from NATO and, and from the uh, tried to join the NATO. And then Czechoslovakia in 1968. So they have the experience. What is happening there? I, I think the Russians have got in there. And uh, what will happen to Kiev? Uh, I don't know. The last occasion was in 1941 when the Battle of Kiev took place. And what the Germans did was they surrounded Kiev. They never took it over. So Russians may be trying to do this and they are putting their strength. They seem to be surrounding cities. How much they come into the... Uh, sent of the cities, I don't know, but there seems to be some strategy uh, they are following. So this is what the war is. It can be, it could have been avoided, but it was not, because I think uh, America tried to uh, test its strength, and Putin is now responding to it with his strength. Fact is, America is more powerful, but Putin has the second largest nuclear arsenal in the world, and the danger lies there. Now that the sanctions have been in place with the US and the West, do you think that the war from Russia's side would stop? I don't think. The sanctions was the uh, only remedy that the West could use because when they were caught with the uh, Russian invasion, the what could they do? They were not prepared to fight. They were not going to fight. Europe was not going to fight. America was not. Their mood is not for a fight. So only only issue that uh, President Biden had was sanctions. They were talking of sanctions. They've gone beyond the normal sanctions, bringing in SWIFT and others. 
so they they, they are now trying to use the sanctions uh, on russia in the hope that russian uh, president will be brought down by the russian uh, people that will turn bad for them putin will be uh, will lose his position but there's another side of politics to it because uh, for instance uh, boris johnson was about to lose his position as prime minister of the united kingdom now he is upping it so that he will go up in the polls he already has climbed about 6 or 7% and he is uh, uh, taking a tough line for president uh, biden also he is in a problematic area because president trump says i there was no war in my time i knew how to deal with putin and how to handle uh, ukraine you couldn't do it so now he has to show that he is going to show bring results and he must bring results quickly because he is going to lose the midterm elections. So he is pressing hard on the sanctions thinking Russia will come down and he can save himself. But uh, basically a lot of the American issues will be domestic issues and the Republicans won't be unhappy if the Russians stay on in Ukraine for a bit longer because then they can get the advantage of it. The third man with elections is President Macron of France but he is playing a different role. He is showing that he can talk to Russia, he can talk to the West, he can talk to China and telling the Frenchman, if you remove me, you won't have a global a leader recognized uh, globally. So he is playing a different game to the other two. And now uh, the Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison, he is also having elections. He is also upping his stakes to show that he can be tough on China. But all this means that we, we are going for, we, we, we don't know where this will end. Each one is playing for his politics. And uh, secondly, uh, this is going to bring down the total global economy and the question with the shift and all should be utilized for political purposes are coming up. So, it, anyway, it's going to be a hit on the western economy also and whether some of the economies can recover, whether COVID recovery will get put back by it is, 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 a, is another, another issue. So, uh, sanctions itself is becoming more complicated and the issue for us is why are countries uh, which are not involved in this also can't do transactions with Russia. That's a big issue for countries who are not involved. So all that that is coming up now. It may be the sanctions may also lead to the question of how West is using its economic power and uh, how do you respond to it. Already other countries are raising this issue. Why has China uh, and India refused to uh, support sanctions against Russia? No, China has the no limit friendship with Russia and is, they say that uh, there are reasons why the Russians acted, they are not uh, defending it and that is that we should stop the fighting. India also, remember India and uh, very close to Russia, so is uh, China and they are members of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization together with Pakistan, Iran and the Central Asian Republics. So Russia is getting support, is getting help from there in the sense they are not turning against. So the, actually the, what has happened is the Shanghai Cooperation Organization is holding. The issue is for the Quad. India is a member but India has not taken the same line as US. But India's self-interest is that they should go along here. But there, there is a bigger issue than just India or China. The fact is that Asia is silent. They haven't condemned Russia. Uh, they, uh, the way America expected them to, they have raised the issue of the invasion in the, in the um, security council, China, India, UAE, all are silent. They were non-committal. India, Indonesia, the leader of the chairman of the G20 is non-committal. It's, it's where Pakistan is also going along with uh, Russia. So it looks as if the whole of uh, Asia, most of them are going along with Russia. Now that is what is important because Asia counts today and everyone is neglecting them or they don't want to report it. There another issue that has come up and I think which uh, we in Asia have to think of. Uh, the, this is another, the third conflict in Europe. Where will it end? The first was World War I. They could not sort out how to do the investigation on the assassination of the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne. And as a, as a, as a result, world, the First World War broke out. Serbia and Russia on one side, Germany and Austria, then France and Britain got in. They couldn't control it. 
the second world war also started in europe and at by 1940 apparently the germans controlled the whole of europe and britain was actually uh, isolated britain could not have survived till 1942 when russia and america were attacked and came into the war without the help of the asians we gave about South Asia alone gave about two and a half million soldiers and a lot of the other resources came from uh, Asia and Africa together with Australia and Canada. But without this, Britain could not have survived without its empire. And when the war was on, remember that China, about five million Chinese between the nationalists and the communists tied down the Japanese so that the land war was basically five million tying down the Japanese in the Asian continent. And then the British 14th Army with the Indians tying it down uh, in Burma. So American soldiers could go up. The US destroyed the Japanese uh, Navy. So without it, the war could not have been won. The French lost their territory. They started a government in exile, free French. They only had a building in uh, London. Then they asked all the French colonies to support the free French. All the Frenchmen who were governors said no. There was one African governor, Felix Eboy of Chad. He declared for France, free France, and that's how the French came up. Whole of Europe was under ger ger the Germans. It's we here who gave the manpower to uh, get Europe liberated. And okay, the Europeans and Americans, Russians put the next world order. That collapsed in 89, but nevertheless, the West and Russia has been running this. Now we find is that they are bungling and they are going for the third uh, third conflict. If it's not a world war, at the moment nuclear weapons are not being used, it uh, certainly there will be economic havoc, which means the Europe is unable, within a century they are unable to control their conflicts and they are trying to come out. So in this case, now Asia has come up. So we, many of us in Asia feel that it's the time Asia stepped up and said this is not anymore your issue. This is, this is uh, our issue. We don't want to go to war. We are not allowing the West to run it the way they want to. We, we all have to get involved. And uh, the Asia staying silent is a message because now the African Union has also not taken part. Though Brazil and Argentina supported US, the uh, Mexicans have stayed out. I don't think it's about the Russians, uh, what we do, because everyone has accepted the fact that Russians have invaded Ukraine. We know they have a reason, they, they had a problem, they have invaded Ukraine, but the problem there is not that. If you ask everyone, they say Russians have invaded U Ukraine. The problem is they don't approve of what the West is doing. So everyone is staying silent. The Asians are saying, look, we are the most powerful uh, countries now, economies are growing. We can't get affected by this. We can't have a world war. We have our disputes, but we haven't gone to this extent. So what, 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 what's happened? Look at China and India had some problems on Himalaya, but if somehow they were able to sort it out. But here, on this main issue, they want to start a world war to win their elections. And uh, therefore, what, what my, my, uh, the Asian view is, look, we can't allow the West only to decide the rules of the world. That Asia must come in. And that is what, we, what I think the view I have and many others have. There are no need to get involved. Uh, I think the government of Sri Lanka has also been non-committed like all the others, Bangladesh, everyone. Some of them who have commented and not said who has invaded whom. They said the invasions are bad and the war must stop. So uh, this has been, uh, th this is what the media is not highlighting. Because the West can't accept the fact that uh, Asia today is also calling the shots. Sri Lanka is heavily reliant on Russia and Ukraine with regards to high exports in tea mm. and tourism. How would this war affect our economy? Well, uh, we, we get affected. Though it's not as big as our exports elsewhere, especially tea. I think the low country and some of the mid drones go to Russia and Ukraine. We can't send it there. So that means a lot of families, low grown families and mid uh, grown families, smallholders are going to be having a problem. So will the uh, factory holders. That's, that's the big one. Secondly, is that they will have a big impact on the global economy. So we still don't know how it will work because the, the Western economies will also get affected. Inflation will be high there. So it's, it's not only a Sri Lankan issue. There's a specific Sri Lankan issue. 
and there is another issue here. How can this, how can our economy be um, not affected by what is Everyone happening will be world? affected by this. It's how we go out. But there are a lot of potential now for Asia to think on its own. The firstly is that we, uh, no one wants the SIFT and others to be used as a political weapon. If US or UK wants to put sanctions against uh, Russia, that's, that's their business. But we should not be stopped from trading with Russia and others. It's a globalized economy in which we agreed that they should run the system. Now, if they are going to use it for political purposes where we lose, then I think Asia has to look at uh, another system. China is starting a China-centric one. Some of the others may not want to have a China-centric one, but they may want to have one that is acceptable all. I think even Africa will join it. And that, that's where the power is. So, the West is losing that uh, hold it had. Even the globalization they have put together, now they are taking it apart. So, so uh, the West controlling these instruments of globalization and finance. Uh, if you look at the other side, now look, Dubai can develop because Dubai has not, UAE hasn't got involved in it. Dubai's international financial center, already people are talking, Dubai is safer. It doesn't play any politics at all. Now, if you look at London, as a London as a financial center, many of our business, others all send their money. And from London, they used to deal with Russia or any other country. Now, when London stops all those transactions, London will not uh, will lose out as a financial center. They've already lost out once on Brexit. And most probably, they will lose some more. And Dubai will uh, really develop. I, I uh, feel that we have to look at alternate systems. Within 10 years, Asia is capable of putting it into order. So, these are big risks that the Americans hadn't thought of that they are, they are Western dominance of the instruments of globalization, especially look at the IT and all, are, are, are no longer relevant. Then, if you look at the Western media, what they are saying is not being accepted in Asia. It's Al Jazeera who's there. Some look at the, here we look at the Indian TVs. So that's, that's, you can see the Western power is being reduced. I, I am, in my view, I think it's ideal time when this confrontation comes to an end for Indonesia as uh, was both the, cha both the chairman of the G20, but also where the first con Asian uh, conference was held for Indonesia together with um, China, India and UAE to summon a conference of all Asian nations and uh, look at how we can reinvent uh, India after all the Asian power started in Indonesia with the Bandung conference. So, they, they can, they, I think they should take the lead in calling for such a conference. Thank you Mr. Rani for your point of view. Thank you, thank you for asking the questions.